morning, good morning. Um, oh, hmm. kind of getting back to that. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Sunday. I did not know I was going to be back on this quickly, but you know, God has a mission and he wants to get done what he wants to get done. So I'll give a couple minutes for some people to pop on. I'm trying to fix my phones because I have one, I have y'all on Instagram and I have y'all on YouTube because I really didn't know how this was going to play out. I'm trying to pull this back so I can get in the camera because my, my, I didn't know how this was going to play out. And honestly, I didn't really think I was going to be back on live this quickly, but the Lord had a message this morning when I woke up and I was like, okay, God, guess we going in. So y'all saw what I uh, posted and I'm going to kind of just kind of dig in on this. Um, because it's a big word to be perfectly honest. Um, those of you who have been following me, you will probably see that I've given some words of New Orleans. I've not given them like voice activated, but clearly God <laughs> wants it this way. So I'm going to make sure that I do it. It is a voice activated season and we are here for his will to be done. So happy Sunday. I will uh, jump in and say this. Um, uh, Today is Sunday, and for anyone who knows or may not know that uh, the Sabbath day is actually on, from Friday um, sundown to Sunday, I mean, to Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. That is actually the day that we're supposed to keep holy, so make sure that you do that and remember that, because lots of people have that a little twisted, but I'm here to tell you the truth. So I'm going to jump in. The word that the Lord gave me this morning, I posted it, but I wanted to make sure that y'all read it. Um, it's from the book of Jeremiah. Um, and y'all know Jeremiah when in prophets, he, they call him the weeping prophet because God gave him prophecies on, on cities and people. And he was showing him what was going to happen. He was like, Oh, please Lord. And that's really how I feel. I love y'all New Orleans, but I have to be very honest. We are in judgment. <laughs> if you have not, if it has not clicked or you haven't noticed, New Orleans is under judgment. Like, big time and the Lord has given us he's given us chances for years and years and years and so it's a harvest season people are reaping what they're sowing not just people nations cities countries it's happening all over the world you see it systems are coming down the order that the world created is being reordered into the Lord's order and so that's a lot of what you see so it's not here I'm not here to scare anybody because we know we know how it ends and we know what happens, but we need to understand so we can maneuver through um, what's going on. So let me jump into the word because well, let me just explain. I have a word today and actually it really goes, which was a little bit different, but it goes, it, it, it is explained through the verse that he gave me. And then I have about, um, go figure, it's the eighth month and he gave me eight things to really uh, hone in on New Orleans. And actually, you know what? Before I go into the prophecy of New Orleans, I'm gonna let people kind of jump on. I'm gonna go into the eight things that he gave me first to tell everybody. So these are important. Um, number one, we need to trust him. Trust him. Oh, I forgot to write that Bible verse. But if you go back and you look at my last post on IG, um, at Eileen, Eileen, E-I-L-E-E-N, double underscore Carter, you can see the uh, Bible verse that goes with that so many people right now are looking for you know something outside because we are dealing with healing everything is coming up you don't know what's going on and everybody's looking for everybody else he's like no come directly to me i have your answers trust him number two speak up he's asking us to speak up in our individual spheres of influence he is asking us to do his will this is not the time a uh, spiritual affair is real spirits are real witchcraft is real all this stuff is real whether you believe it or not it's like gravity it is and so therefore it affects you every day and i will say this um golly i didn't know i was gonna go into this but new orleans has like principalities and strongholds that are like ridiculous like leviathan jezebel absalom leviathan is like the spirit of pride he's a very a constrictor he doesn't allow spiritual growth honestly that's why new orleans doesn't have a lot of prophecy that's why new orleans doesn't have a lot of uh uh relationship with jesus because our leaders and the stronghold over the entire region is just a lot. But these things are breaking off and the Lord's here and whoo, 
Y'all get ready for this. Uh, Jezebel, um, I'm giving y'all the short version. Please go, if, if some of these are, are, are touching you, please go and um, uh, research them more so you can find deliverance because we all need deliverance. Trust me, I've been through deliverance. Uh, it's a real thing. Um, Jezebel, like manipulation, control, y'all, y'all know those type of people and y'all can say, people say spirits, you know, I try to make it easier for people and I say characteristics if that makes it easier for you, but watch out these people are, are here in Absalom the spirit of Absalom um, and he is known as the loving backstabber so we need to be uh, really aware that these things are in our region and these are principalities and strongholds and things that are really trying to aggravate us right now and they're only aggravate like they're really aggravating us right now because they're manifesting and we are breaking lots of stuff right now so intercessors get on your wall um and with uh, speak up I like to put a Bible verse with everything because if somebody does not redirect you to the word, you should like look at them sideways. True story. So uh, for uh, speak up, it's Proverbs 31, 8 and 9. So y'all can take notes on these or I may post them later. Um, the third thing the Lord wanted me to tell y'all was to get off the fence. All you lukewarm people, please get off the fence. Like in faith, trust him. Um, either at this point, either we're walking with Jesus or we're not. And um, if you're, I don't even want to go there um, but right now it's really interesting that people are having a problem saying the name Jesus because everybody likes to say God but when everybody says God that does not mean that it's your God it's not Yahweh I am that I am so we have to be really specific about when we talk about who we are talking about the way which is Jesus Christ so please make sure that when you are talking about you know your belief system if Jesus Christ is it to be to be, to be um, very clear with that the fourth thing you wanted me to bring was to check your heart. Ugh. Ooh, Lord, check it and guard it right now. And I'm going to um, give the Bible verse to that too. That is Galatians 5, 16 through 23. And all of these are actually posts that I have had in the last couple, like the last two weeks. So you can go to those posts if, or any of these things are really touching you. You can go to that post and kind of get the word and um, sit on it. And the Lord probably has a message for you. Um... Number five, this is a big one that, uh, I have to be honest in the truth. We have absolutely have false prophets in the city of New Orleans who are saying God said and God didn't say. And they're saying it straight from the pulpit. And when they do that, they are spreading um, whatever spirit that they're working with. If they're working with witchcraft, guess what's coming out their mouth to their congregation. If they're uh, working with Jezebel, manipulation control, that's what they're spreading out to their congregation. If they're working with Leviathan, they have too much pride, their ego, you know, it's, it's their ministry and you know, they, they people have their back and we idolize people. We should not be idolizing people. The only one person that we should be worried about is Jesus Christ. We are only vessels. I am only a vessel. I am here yielding to the Holy Spirit and that's how I get my information. The end. So we need to really uh, be careful of false prophets and I really uh, urge you all to check whoever you are getting your special information from, check their heart um, because God sees all things and we don't. So you really need to pray and get a confirmation on who you're getting your information from. And that coordinating Bible verse is Jeremiah 23, um, 30 and through 32. Um, number six, I have three more and then I'm gonna go into the word for New Orleans. Um, number six, watch out for Judas around you as they are being revealed right now. Ooh, right now, all is being revealed. I will say that um, we need to get our, our hearts ready. Like I said, check your heart. We need to get our hearts ready to um, digest some information that the Lord is going to be revealing to us because some of it might not be so comfortable. Um, and the Bible verse connected to that is Romans 1, 29 through 32. And the last two are num seven. There are kingdom leaders that God is rising up in the city of New Orleans right now, and they look absolutely nothing like what you think that they are going to look like. So be um, aware of that. Uh, God qualifies the call, people do not. Um, I'll leave that there. Um, and the verse that goes with that is Matthew 21, 42 through 44. And last but not least, uh, number eight, we have a very heavy religious spirit in the city of New Orleans, a spirit of religion, and we really, <laughs> need like religion is duh, 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 duh. this is the order we could talk about order all day long but god can change it and do whatever he wants he spoke out of a pain a donkey well he did miracles we're, and that's another thing we're going to see miracle signs and wonders so get ready for that 
um, but the religious spirit really has to go. So I'm going to jump into the prophecy of that the, the Lord gave me for the city of New Orleans. Um, I'm going to read the word and then give it to you because I don't like, I don't know if a lot of people are ready for it because I honestly, I was like, you want to say this today, God? Okay. So um, I opened my Bible to Jeremiah 30, 10 through 16. I'm going to read that first. And this is about the correction of New Orleans and where we are and what is really going on. Because a lot of people say, what is all this going on? Well, you know, we watch the news to see what's going on and we read the Bible and we understand why. So let me break this down for you a little bit. So Jeremiah 10 through 16, and that is chapter 30, is, therefore do not fear my, my servant Jacob, says the Lord, nor be dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return and have rest and be quiet and no one shall make him afraid. For I am with you, says the Lord, to save you. Though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered you, yet I will not make a complete end of you, but I will correct you in justice. That's where New Orleans is. We are being corrected in justice. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. Mm -hmm. I lost my place. We're corrected in justice. And I will not let you all together go unpunished. So let me read that again. That is uh, Jeremiah 30, 11. Yet I will not make a complete end of you. But I will correct you in justice. And I will not let you go altogether unpunished. So we're going to get our issue. Um, there have been intercessors rising up. So it probably the Lord is uh, showing us a little mercy. But we're still going to get our issue. 12, for thus says the Lord, your affliction is incurable. Now, this is the conversation he's having to the city of New Orleans that he gave to me. Um, your affliction is incurable. Your wound is severe. There is no one to plead your cause. And he's saying that because the leaders of New Orleans as of right now are not in the will of God, many of them, which is a problem for the Lord. So we need, we don't have our covering right now. And so that's not such a good thing. Um, there is no one to plead your cause that you may be bound up. You have no healing med med medicines. All your lovers have forgotten you. Everybody who loves to come to New Orleans have a great time, but guess what? Everybody's forgotten us. They do not seek you for I have wounded you and the wound of an enemy. They're not coming here. We're not getting all the love. Why? Because we're having issues in New Orleans. With the chastisement of a cruel one for the multitude of your inequities because your sins have increased. We have not been listening to the Lord. He's given us sign after sign after sign. We're like, oh, that's just a coincidence. No, it's not. Coincidences absolutely do not exist. I don't know. Like, we absolutely got the okie doke. We really need to eliminate the word because it's a lie from the devil. True story. <laughs> that's how the, the biggest thing is to make us think that it doesn't exist. It absolutely does. It goes on to say in, in verse 15, why do you cry about your affliction? And he's talking to the city. He's like, New Orleans, why do you cry about your affliction? You're doing what you're doing. You clearly don't care. You keep doing it. So why are you crying about it? Your sorrow is incurable because of the multitude of your inequities, but because of your sins have increased. I have done these things to you. We are under the judgment of the Lord. Therefore, all those who devour you shall be devoured. But just because he's correcting us does not mean you could take advantage of us in our time of sorrow or when we're like getting our stuff together. So get your mind right. And, and all your adversities, every one of them shall go into captivity. Those who plunder you shall become plundered. So I go to say that. And so that the first part of what the Lord gave me was correction uh, for the city, just to kind of let you know where we were. But New Orleans is under judgment and if your spiritual leader hasn't explained that to you, um, you may want to check their heart. And that's the truth. And so now I'm going to go into the second half of the uh, prophecy that the, world, that the Lord gave me. And that is Jeremiah 17 through 24, which this is a lot more fun um, for all us believers and kingdom people. Um, don't be afraid through this. Uh, we are in harvest season. We are reaping what we what what has been sown. And so if you have been toiling, you have been doing what you're supposed to be doing, 
you're going to get your suddenly your business is going to going to work or the lord's going to give you a strategy we're going to have divine um opportunities divine uh connections are really going to happen and i'm really excited about that because i've already seen it start to happen with a lot of people that the lord has connected me with so i'm really excited like jobs out of nowhere y'all i'm talking about somebody who was like literally homeless one day and got a job in dc the next i'm not kidding that is how the lord is working and i'm really excited about uh, all the kingdom people who've really been putting their time on the wall and people are like oh god took so long but it's not that god's taking so long it's that he's really patient because he doesn't really want to have to like punish us it's our issue that our free will we're choosing this and he's like come on come back come on come back and we like what so that's where we are now um so i'm gonna get a little bit to the healing part which is the word that the lord gave me today i woke up and Actually, it was before I woke up. Last night, he gave me restore. And I was like, okay, I guess I know what we're talking about tomorrow. And so I woke up this morning and it was just like, it was like pounding, restore, 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 restore. So I was like, okay. And I went, um, I was like, what's the verse that you want me to talk about? And then he sent me to Jeremiah 30, 17 through 24. So this is more of the part that people would like. Um, and as I go through it, I'm gonna give you the word as I go through it and then kind of circle it back together because if I just read it, I don't think he'll get all of it at one point. So starting at uh, 17, for I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord, because they called you an outcast saying, this is Zion, no one seeks her. So all those have, um, that no one, wait, oops, let me get to here. Um, for I was, oh, I'm sorry, I wrote the wrong, on the wrong line. Um, for I will restore your health, the Lord is, restoring us but and i know that's like a happy word and exciting but just like i said in the post reckoning comes before resets so we are definitely having a reset in the city of new orleans so that is something very excited to be about because i know a lot of the residents are like all the crime and the just the everything you can just look at each it, like education system pick a department or a situation in the city of new orleans and everybody's like ah the lord is coming to restore and and rebuild but i do have to make you understand this it is not coming in the way that you think it's coming who jesus give me the, the strength to say this new orleans is going to have flooding really really horrible flooding and we are going to get it and through this process, this is our cleansing. The Lord is going to cleanse New Orleans. Um, so just on a side note, check your flood insurance, true story. Um, we are going to go through our reckoning period and then we are going to go through a revival period. It is going to be a three year process and kingdom believers, you're gonna be all right. Cause the crazy part is through this recession and downfall, there's gonna be a lot of people who you're gonna look around and, and they are not gonna understand how you are making it and how you are increasing in this season, but it's because the Lord has his hand on you. And if you have been doing what you're supposed to be doing, you already know it's coming. Um, this is really just confirmation for you, but do know we are about to get it and I would, tell you to get your documents in order and get all your stuff in order this is not something easy i say we are in the time of noah we're going two by two and the floods are happening you can look at them all over the world um i am not um this has also been confirmed by a couple other prophets and honestly i've posted it about three times but i've never said it out loud because i was just like ugh. when i saw the vision of it it made me cry um yeah so i really need y'all to take care of yourself and your families because um the block is hot and a lot of what you see in new orleans with the crime and stuff is really manifestation of the evil uh getting their issue with god right now so that is a lot of what you see so you may see all this stuff in the streets but a lot of it is the lord going in and um Cert, uh, and really driving down judgment in the streets and in the neighborhoods of New Orleans. And for all you intercessors, this is something I do and I ask you to do this as well. Really pray for your neighborhoods. I pray over the entire city. Um, that is the authority in the region that the Lord has given me. And um, go, uh, pray over your neighborhoods, pray over your children, pray over the schools in your neighborhood, pray over 
pray over everything. I pray over everything, but you know, for, for you pray over what you are responsible for. And so if that is your job, then pray over your job, pray over your children, pray over your family, pray y'all now is not the time. And I know people get like, you know, uncomfortable prayer or whatever. There was time. I didn't know how to pray. Just talk. Just literally talk to God. He will lead you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. Get in your word. Even if it's like a, a verse a day, find something to put in your spirit so that you're feeding it so that you can grow. Because now is not the time to not be walking with the Lord. I'm really not kidding. It is to the point, and I'm going to be very honest, they have people who have been outside the will and are losing their lives at this point. They have leadership who are literally not waking up because they have not chosen to do what they're supposed to be doing and they continue to lead their flocks astray and countries astray and so that's what a lot of what you see oh I, i'm gonna get back to this but lord the holy spirit's pulling me out of out of me right now so i gotta say that's a lot of what you see in leadership um honestly in the city of new orleans and across the world i know we're talking about new orleans right now but i, I like to show the, the larger picture so you can see it We've seen a lot of um, leadership around the world removed and replaced and do know that this was done by the Lord. So um, that does not mean that New Orleans is immune from that. And so I have said this or posted a couple times, I've not said it out loud, but our leadership in the city of New Orleans really needs to check their hearts because and I'm not talking about one person, I'm talking about anyone who has a leadership position, you need to check your heart because judgment is here if you haven't gotten your issue you're gonna get it harvest season whatever you're putting out is what you're gonna get and honestly a lot a lot of them have already made their decisions and so has the Lord and that's what you're gonna that's what you see playing out and there will be leadership removed and replaced I'm just a vessel delivering the message. So prepare for that. Um, back into the word that he, back into the, the verse, and I will bring it to the word. Actually, I'm just going to read the rest of it and then speak and just let it go from there. Um, so I'll go back to 17. For I will restore health to you and heal your wounds, says the Lord, because they called you an outcast saying, this is Zion, no one seeks her. Thus says the Lord, behold, I will bring back the captivity of Jacob's tent and have mercy on his dwelling places. The city shall be put upon its own mound and the palace shall remain according to its own plan. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them and they shall not diminish. I, I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. This is what's coming. Their children also shall be as before. We're having issues with our youth. Hey, Mark, we're having issues with the, they're saying the youth of New Orleans, the youth of New Orleans, the Lord is coming to, to handle it. I'm not kidding y'all. And the congregation shall be established before me and I will punish all who oppress them. Their nobles shall be from among and their governor shall come from their midst. Now that's also an important point. I'm gonna kind of bring that back because um, our new leadership is going to come from us. Take that how you want, but our new leadership is going to come from us. The Lord is literally choosing them. <laughs> choosing them. Um, for who is this? Wait, then I will cause him to draw near. He's causing the leaders to draw near to the Lord right now and preparing them for leadership. And I can't speak to who these people are, but I will say the Lord has connected me with, um, and I've given words for, uh, about six or seven people so far in the city of New Orleans. Um, some will be in full like elected leadership positions and some are like community leaders and stuff like that. 